Hello, good afternoon people. This afternoon we are talking about how to adjust your ALDA system. It's something that people ask me about quite often. I have an older video that explains what ALDA is, but I'd like to do a video that's a bit more specific where you can actually see how your adjustments will affect the pump. So, for the example on the test bench here, we're on test bench number two, we're in the uh, disassembly side of the pump room um, we have a gold billet injector pump which I absolutely love uh, there are two of these currently being assembled one is uh, for a customer and the other one is going on a rather special build so um, if you'd like to come round this side with me I'll show you the other types of ALDA system. So here we can see two types of ALDA system. Now this is the billet anti-jerk uh, ALDA system um, that you saw on the pump, the billet pump in the other room. And this is the older version of uh, ALDA system. Now this is very, very similar to the diesel mechan version. Uh, I think the just the material and shape varies but the same adjustment principle can be applied to this one as with a diesel mechan pump. Um, so what you'll find is when a pump arrives with you you'll get a tag and on the tag you'll have a, a little bit of writing. So you'll have low 44, high 120 and max 150. Now these settings, these numbers will vary depending on the size of the pump. By me just looking at that, I know that's a 7.7. .7. That's our one in the middle. So the six mil would obviously have lower and the 8.5 would be higher. Um, so what it means is when you're running this injector pump at 1000 RPM on the bench, which is equivalent to 2000 on the engine, if we gave it full throttle as it stands right now, as you see it, it would produce 44 cc's as an average over a thousand shots. So that's off boost and that's what we write down as low, that's off boost. So then as your engine accelerates and it starts to make some turbo pressure, um, the turbo starts to work and then uh, a small feed pipe will come off your inlet manifold or wherever, wherever it comes off and it will go to this canister or that one if you have that style and what will happen is this system here will pull forward as you can see there look it'll pull forward and as that moves forward with the air pressure being applied to the cylinder it will then allow the pump to produce 120 cc so this is like a, a restrictor for the rack so the more we push it backwards like that, the less CC it'll make and the more it comes this way, so it, the, the more CC it'll make. That is actually the original stop lever on these pumps. So you can imagine you push it that way and it'll turn the engine off. And it will. If you, put, if you adjust it that way enough, it won't run. So then you'll have this little number written on the bottom and it says pump max 150 CC. So that means if you took the ALDA system completely off here, um, the pump would make a maximum of 150 cc. Uh, but you don't have to take it off. Obviously, you can adjust these screws forward and that will give you that maximum 150 cc. So I'll just briefly go through the screws that make the adjustments. So the low is the off boost setting. And you see we've engraved on here uh, and this screw adjusts that. If you move this screw forwards toward the front of the vehicle, that will give you more fuel. So as we screw that screw in that way, the low will start to increase, 45, 46, 47. And if you want it to be lower, so if you've got too much smoke um, at the very low end, so when there's no turbo kicked in, then you would want to uh, decrease this number and you would screw that screw in towards the back of the pump. So that's the, the low end. So if you want to adjust the high end fueling, the 120 cc, so if you want to adjust the on boost, so let's see, say for example, we're 3000 revs and upwards, um, and the turbo's kicked in, that alder is pushed right forward, 
and we want a little bit more because we find that there's no smoke and we think the turbo could give us a little more, then we're going to adjust those two screws forward so that this triangle has the ability to move further this way to allow the pump to make more fuel. And then the same, the opposite. If it's making too much smoke, let's say you've bought a 7.7 mil pump and you're running a factory turbo and you're having issues like too much smoke when the turbo kicks in or at the high revs, or you're even having an issue of it backfiring and missing because your exhaust gas pressure's too high and your wastegate's too small on the stock turbo, um, then you can wind them screws in also to reduce that fuel in uh, to, make it, to make it basically run better. So the same applies for this system. The difference is this screw here operates or adjusts the low setting. So if we want to make less fuel on the low end, that screw needs to go that way so it pushes the lever closed if we want to make more fuel on the low end that way and then this screw here is going to do the high end so if we want to make more fuel we want to wind that screw upwards if we want to make less fuel we want to screw that screw downwards and that applies to pretty much all the pumps i know certainly with mine uh, diesel mechan like i say are very similar to this one I don't know about the mainer pumps. I think they have a module on the top. They don't really participate in the whole English speaking world. So uh, I'm sure the product's fine, but I don't know anything about it. So I can't really give any advice on that one. Um, so now I can show you on that test bench what those adjustments and how sensitive uh, the adjustments are. So you have an idea of what you're adjusting. Let's go over. Um, I'm going to run this now at 1000 RPM pump speed. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, bench speed, 2000 RPM engine. Um, we've got inlet pressure set probably about one and a half bar. Um, and the throttle lever, as you can see, is fixed fully open because when we're doing these particular tests, it equates to full full throttle or wide open. So we've got no air applied to the Alder. So we are imagining that there is no boost pressure. We've just put our foot down and we're going to see what CC it makes. <laughs> Okay, so what you're going to see is um, these tubes will settle a little um, and ideally uh, what I was trying to hit is 50cc as an average. Now remember, with these mechanical pumps, uh, especially with larger elements, uh, we have to get the best average we can get. I try and get the idle quantities, so the lower quantities at, at tick over to be absolutely bang on. Um, and then I let that dictate what the rest of the RPM range can uh, give us, as in the evenness between each cylinder. Um, because you, you, it's dangerous doing it the other way because you can have bad idle and things like that. Just from experience, that's the best way. Um, and as, a, as a, a little bit of info for you, I like to keep the cylinders within about 5% of each other. That, that seems to be about the golden one. So my bench is reading a hundred shots at the minute, not a thousand shots as we write on the sticker. A thousand shots is a bit of an industry standard to describe something, but these benches run a hundred shots. Uh, well, I have them set on hundred shots. I can make it 200, 300, 400, whatever, but a hundred shots. So as we can see, we always read from the bottom of the meniscus and you can see that pretty much we've got maybe a 4.9 average uh, across the board there. So that Alder system there is holding that back. So now what you're going to see me do is uh, not ordinarily what I would do is I would write that down. I actually already have. You can see I've already recorded the rack travel and cc's of each cylinder. So next what I would do is I put on uh, an air supply of some description. We're on test bench two so we're using the pumpy pump. Um, 
ignore the gauge because the gauge has gone a bit pear shaped but you'll see as I apply air pressure to this you can imagine this is like a turbo um, you can see it moving straight away we consider this like a one bar actuator but you can see that actuators pretty much gone to its full extent with about 1.3 bar of pressure uh, that gives you an idea and obviously with the design of this type of alder system I uh, don't know if you've seen the older videos but this triangle can be flipped and if you flip the triangle the pivot point acts lower down uh, sorry the the pressure point acts lower or further away from the pivot point and it actually gives you a uh, slower transition onto boost so if you're finding that it suddenly smokes um, before the turbo kicks in or it's, it's increasing fueling faster than the turbo can increase you can actually flip that round which was kind of a, a nifty idea anyway so now we've moved that forward and what we're going to do is we're going to do the same test again <laughs> Right, so, as we're waiting for it to slow down, so when, when you'd be doing these tests, you would normally have a set amount of time that you would leave these to settle before reading them, um, because obviously you're wanting to keep everything by the same standard, so you may read them at 30 seconds after it's stopped or whatever, whatever but... Anyway, you can see, so we just ran it at the same RPM. The throttle lever was still at the full position, but the Alder system was further forward. So it allowed the rack to come further forward. And that has given us uh, this average that we can see here. So we've got probably, um, this is cylinder six at the back. So we've got maybe 14.2, 14.4, 14.5, 14, 14, and 14.4, for example. Um, so... I would like to drop that down a little. That's a bit high, um, in my opinion, for a pump that's getting sent out. Because I have to bear in mind that some of these customers um, aren't going to know anything about adjustment. They're going to install this pump straight onto the vehicle. So I like to set them a little bit pulled back so that they can't blow anything up. Um, and you can start start low and work your way up to the bigger power. So I like to set them around about 120 cc thereabouts. So I'm going to do that now and you can see how I do it. So we need simply a 10 mil spanner. And realistically, what we want to do is this will, as a, as a rough average, now this is probably not going to work now I've said this, but as a rough average, a mil is going to take off 10 cc with this particular type of Alder system. I know that works with 7.7, .7. it's probably more sensitive than 8.5. So what we'll do is, we're just going to um, take these two screws back by around two millimeters. Now what I'm gonna have to do is just release that pressure. So if I just make what I think is roughly a two mil gap between them nuts, because I'm wanting to drop 140 to 120, Yep, about there. This obviously is not an exact science because we will adjust it accordingly by the results that the test bench gives us. So we adjust them two back. Now these Alder systems, as you can see, they have the two screws and you think, well, it's a bit more fiddly, but these give such better linear travel of the rail. The older system that I just showed you in there with the one literally one rod holding it are so susceptible to being pushed down and bent you, you wouldn't even realize you give it one little tweak on there and you can change your fueling by 10 cc it's that easy whereas these things are pretty tough it's quite hard to mess with them by just knocking it around and handling it right so I pump that up drain this one down start the lift pump
right then. <laughs> that wasn't staged. And quiet. So that wasn't staged. Uh, that two millimeter guess uh, did just take the 2cc off that I wanted. And now what we have is a 120cc average. And as you can see, we have to average it out amongst all the cylinders. Um, generally, like I said, the middle of the RPM range, the middle of the throttle range, you are gonna see this kind of difference, um, regardless whether it's a Mercedes built pump or whoever's built the pump. So there you have it. So about a millimetre takes off about a cc with our Alba. Obviously, it's not super accurate. The accurate way, if you wanted to know your cc, would be to put it on a test bench. But you've just seen how to reduce your Alba setting by, by 20 cc. Now, what you could do is, if you were wanting to increase it, you could do the same the other way. And like I say to everybody, it's well worthwhile measuring or marking before you move that before you actually start to move that. But I hope that's given everybody at home an understanding of how the Alba system works, how as it moves forward or moves further back, um, it changes the CC. And basically by showing you there the way that we screwed those screws in, it pulled the triangle back, it pulled that throttle lever back, and it produced less CC. It's really that basic. And you can see, as I pull it there, it pulls the rack back but don't be confused in thinking that the rack is actually attached to this lever because it's not. That all obviously goes through the governor. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you like my gold billet pump because I really do. I don't want to let these go. I want to keep them all for myself. I'm going to put them in my own Christmas stocking and give them to myself for Christmas because I like it so much. Um, bye for now. <laughs>